New Zealand has become a much more unequal society since about 1980. In the later 1980s, it had the fastest rises in inequality uh, of any of the rich developed countries. It ceased, in a way, to be uh, a fair go society, if you like. Uh, this graph shows the rise in income distribution uh, going on till uh, 2004 or 5, and then a slight diminution since then. What that has done is left uh, New Zealand amongst the most uh, unequal of the rich developed countries. Um, you can see it marked in this histogram. Our measure of inequality is simply how much richer the top 20% than the bottom 20% in each country. Um, and you can see at the more equal end, uh, the more equal societies on the left, Japan, Finland, Norway, Sweden, that gap, the rich earn about uh, three and a half or four times as much as the poorest 20%. But in the more unequal societies, Australia, New Zealand, UK, Portugal, USA, the gap is almost twice as big. Um, and we're going to show you what that does to a society. And here you see we've put all these uh, different measures into one index, an index of, of health and social problems. They're all weighted equally. And what you see in this graph is an ex extraordinarily strong tendency for the more unequal countries uh, to do worse on all these kinds of measures. But if you look at the same index of health and social problems in relation to national income per person, you find once again there's no relationship. So what seems to matter for the scale of these problems is the size of the income differences between us not any longer the average levels of uh, material standards. We decided as well to look at uh, the United Nations measures of child well-being in different countries. And here you see that uh, measure of child well-being in relation to inequality. And once again, there's a strong tendency for the more unequal countries to do worse. New Zealand doesn't do quite as badly as the UK, but it does almost as badly the second worst in all those countries. It's not absolute poverty any longer that matters. It's how far behind the rest of us children have got. It's relative poverty um, or low social status that matters. It's the differences between us. What I'm going to do is take you through some of those individual components of our index of health and social problems. I'm going to start with levels of trust in different countries and these come from the World Values Survey, so random samples of the population where people are simply asked do you think most other people can be trusted or not? And in the more equal countries around two-thirds of the population feel they can trust one another and in the more unequal ones it's less than a fifth. And that level of trust pervades all of our social relationships the quality of life for all of us all the time. So it affects women walking home alone at night, young men meeting other men on a street corner, relationships at work, relationships on the playground, social cohesion. It's a very, very important variable. Let's look now at mental illness. These are measures from the World Health Organization's survey of mental illness, where they're not simply asking people um, their feelings about mental illness or whether or not they've been to see a doctor, they're actually doing diagnostic interviews with random samples of the population in different countries. And you can see that it, in the more equal countries, fewer than one in ten of the adult population have had some kind of mental illness in the past year, and it rises dramatically in the more unequal countries, with greater than a fifth of the population of New Zealand having had some kind of mental illness in the past year. Drug use is more common in more unequal countries. Here we see at the top end Australia, New Zealand, the UK and the USA having a higher level of use of illicit drugs, according to the United Nations, than the more equal countries. Educational scores are higher in more equal countries and here we see New Zealand actually doing a little bit better than we would expect given its level of inequality. And this highlights the fact that there are many other causes of the health and pro social problems that we show. Inequality isn't the only cause of these problems 
Other things matter as well. That's why we see a scatter of points. Sometimes a country like New Zealand will do a little bit better on one measure like education here um, and a little bit worse on some others. But it's the overall shared pattern that is so powerful and so interesting. Here are infant mortality rates for different countries with much higher rates of infant mortality in the more unequal countries and lower levels among the more equal ones. And here are teenage birth rates. Again, this is an area where New Zealand does particularly badly, um, almost as high a level as the UK, which has the worst in Western Europe and surpassed only by the USA. And I'll finish up with this one, which is levels of imprisonment. If you know a country's level of inequality, you can see that you can pretty accurately predict its level of imprisonment. And this doesn't have so much to do with levels of crime. It's partly explained by changes in levels of crime, but it's mostly explained by the harshness of the judicial system, how likely it is that somebody who comes into the criminal justice system is sent away to prison rather than given some other kind of sentence, and how long they're sent away for. Uh, you see that inequality seems to affect all of us. Its effects are biggest on the poor, but even at the top of society there's a small benefit to living in a more equal society. By that I mean that whatever your level of income or education, if you had the same income or education and lived in a more equal society, you'd probably live a little bit longer. You'd be less likely to become a victim of violence. Your children might do a bit better at school they'd be less likely to uh, become uh, involved in drugs or to become teenage parents. So, in terms of the really important measures of human well-being, uh, greater equality is good for us all.